Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're gonna go into a deep dive of what a derivative actually is. So let's go ahead and dive into it here. We're just starting off with a function. We have f of x equals x squared and we wanna go ahead and find the derivative of this function. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the limit definition of the derivative. So here we have the limit definition and we're gonna go ahead and go through what this means. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my function and I'm gonna grab a random x value. So here I can find my corresponding f of x as well, right? That's where the function is defined at that x value. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add on some little value of h. So here I have a distance h and now my new spot is gonna be x plus that little distance. So here I can go ahead and find also our corresponding f of x plus h. So we're able to connect these two points just like this, right? And we can find the slope between these two points. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have slope is found by finding the change in y divided by the change in x. So here I'm going to go ahead and find my change in y. I have f of x plus h minus f of x. And then all of this is divided by my change in x. So that is going to be with x plus h and x. So notice here that these x's cancel out actually. And so here, all we're left with is, and that is exactly what's inside the limit definition of a derivative. So here we have the first part, but let's go ahead and pay attention to the second part where it says we're taking the limit as h goes to zero. So what we're doing is we're taking our x plus h and we're minimizing the distance between these two points. So our points are getting closer and closer together. And I'll show what that looks like on the function. So here we're taking our point and we're sliding it along our function as that distance closes until we're getting closer and closer to our function. And also what we're doing is we're finding the slope between these two points. So notice the slope between these two points is gonna be different than the slope between these two points, right? So really what we're doing is we're getting super, super close to our point here. So I'm just zooming in. So here's our original point and our point is getting closer and closer and closer until there's virtually zero distance between these two points. That would be like when we zoom in on the graph right here, this looks like a straight line, right? So let's go ahead and find the slope just by finding change in y over change in x. So we start at this point, we go up 2, and then we go over 1. And let's go ahead and make sure that checks out. We go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So this right here at this point, it has a slope of 2. So now let's go ahead and calculate the actual derivative at x equals 1. So here I'm going to plug in x is equal to 1 everywhere I've seen x. Here we can plug this into our function because we know our function is equal to x squared. So we just change our input. This becomes 1 plus h squared minus 1 squared, all divided by h still. We get 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 1 all over h. And notice here we can cancel out these 1s. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. And so here we, I'll go ahead and rewrite it. I'm gonna go ahead and factor out an h from the numerator, right? And we're left over with two plus h, and all of this is divided by h. The purpose of this is so we can cancel out those h's, and here we have, okay, so now we can go ahead and plug in our limit value. So we have h is approaching zero, and I'm gonna replace that everywhere you see an h. So here I get two plus zero, which is equal to two. And notice that is exactly the slope that we get at that point. So again, if I were to zoom in on this point, it looks like we basically have a straight line right here. So this slope at this point is equal to two. That describes its rate of change. Let's go ahead and try this out now at x equals two instead. So here I have my x value, which is equal to two. And as we were to close in on points together, so perhaps we start out here and then our points are getting closer and closer. That distance is going to zero we end up with a straight line. And that's if I were to zoom in right here. I want to see what this slope is equal to. What were to happen if I were to extend that out? So again, we can do it by extending it out or we can do it by using this definition right here. So I'll go ahead and do that so we can see the value. So 
by working that out with the limit definition, I got a value of 4, which tells me that tiny little line right here has a slope of 4. So if I were to extend out the line, it would look something like this. So here what I did was I extended out that line, and let's go ahead and see the slope of the line. So here we start at this point, and we go up 4, and we go over 1. And we here we have a slope of 1. I can do the same thing going down. We go down 4 over 1. This gives us another slope of 4. So this is how the derivative works. It represents the rate of change of that function. So here's the thing. I don't want to have to find the derivative at every single point individually. I don't want to have to solve for that number. I'm going to get real lazy. So what we do in order to solve for the actual derivative, instead of having to plug in a value, I just keep it at x. So I'll show us what this looks like. Here's two examples where we plugged in an actual value. Let's do it more generally. Generally. So we know what our function is equal to, right? We have the f of x equals x squared. So let's just plug that in. Here we get quantity x plus h squared minus x squared all divided by h, right? So instead of a specific point, I'm saying, okay, I'm finding the derivative for all points. I can plug in any value of x here. So now let's go ahead and simplify this and see what happens. So notice here that first and last value cancel out just like they did in both of these. Those ones canceled out and the fours canceled out. So this is a good thing because we can go ahead and factor out an h in the numerator. So when we pull out an h, we're left with 2x plus h. And all of this is divided by h. And the purpose of doing that is so we can divide out these h's. So we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of quantity 2x plus h. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in that limit value. So h is approaching 0, and I'm going to replace that everywhere I see an h. This way we get 2x plus 0, which is equal to 2x. So this is saying, okay, now I can plug in any point, and here I have the slope uh, at that point. So let's go ahead and look at our picture. Remember, when we found the derivative at 1, we got a value of 2. And when we found the derivative at 2, we got a value of 4. Now our function for the derivative was 2x. So here if I plot those values, 2x, 2, 4, I go up to 6, 8. Here's our function. So here's the derivative. f prime of x is equal to 2x. The derivative represents the rate of change of the function at any given point. So if I want to find the rate of change of x is equal to 3, instead of having to plug it in, I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into my actual derivative. So here we have f prime at 3 is equal to 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. And that's exactly where our point is. If we want to find the rate of change of the function at 4, I just plug it into my derivative. So here I get 2 times 4, which is equal to 8. And that corresponds with where our actual derivative is at. Let's take a look at x is equal to negative 2. So if I were to zoom in really close on my function, it would look like I have a straight line, something like that. And if I extended it out, my straight line would have a negative slope. So let's go ahead and check that with our derivative. We have f prime at negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2, which is equal to negative 4. So this right here has a slope of negative 4. And if I could actually see my derivative, I would be at negative 4. Another fun value is when our slope is equal to 0. So for example, if we look at x equals 0, I'd get 2 times 0, which is equal to 0. That's because this is where our function is neither increasing nor decreasing. And this is going to be at the minimum of our function. So believe it or not, mathematicians got even more lazy. They said, okay, the limit definition works. I can do this for any function, but I don't want to do it for any function because I'm lazy and that's a lot of work. So they generalized all of these different ways of solving for the derivative. So the one that we just looked at is called power rule. And there are other rules that we have, such as product rule, quotient rule. We have like exponents, natural log, logarithms, all that stuff. And I have many videos on them, so you guys can go ahead and check out those rules. But they're not just rules for us to memorize. They're here so we don't have to do the limit definition every single time. So it's to save us time and a headache from having to do this when you have like a disgusting function. That's all I have for us today on this video. I hope it was helpful on understanding what a derivative is. If you enjoyed this video, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlists that are linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.